Capsulate is a host-based Linux detection and response platform for protecting all your cloud workloads. It can run in virtualized environments, physical environments, Kubernetes, as well as containerized environments. The core component is the underlying operating system, which is Linux. For this demo, we're working inside a Kubernetes cluster with a number of different pods running, including a Metasploit container, which you can see here. So what I'm going to do is exec into that Metasploit container, and we're going to end up seeing a couple of different things inside of that system. First, you'll notice that we have this Poner.shell script, and what we're going to do is to run this Poner.shell script against a replica web application host, or what is known as Target1. To perform this attack, we'll use the Poner.shell script, which is a prepackaged reverse shell attack on the web application itself. As it executes, we're actually using Metasploit to obtain that shell onto that production system, which we're identifying here as Target1. Now that we have access to the underlying host, I'm going to run a quick command here just to see what type of account or user privileges I have on this system. I ran the who am I command, and I'm running as www-data, which is essentially a service account or non-privileged account. Now that we have access to the web application target one via the reverse shell for Metasploit, we also have access into the underlying production system. If I jump back over to the Capsulate console, you can see that we've generated an alert in near real time titled a suspicious interactive shell which means that there is some processor program that has access to the server Target1, where the Capsulate sensor was running and monitoring for potentially malicious activity. We can drill down and investigate this alert further to understand the context of the alert itself, provide some more information related to the container, the namespace, as well as the pod within Kubernetes that this particular shell is running within. We can also get some more historical evidence related to the process lineage that was executed inside of that web application server, Target1. The reason that the process lineage information is so valuable is that it gives us a snapshot going all the way back to the initialization of the system, in this case, System D. So System D is responsible for managing and maintaining all process activity inside the host itself. And our process lineage viewpoint from Capsulate here he essentially maps back those historical roots to understand what system D did to spawn, in this case, Docker D, and then Docker D spawn container D, all the way up to the point where you can see specific forks and execs that are taking place within the process lineage, back to the high-level process here, or process ID 15558, which ultimately triggered this original alert. Capsulate process lineage data is available for security teams to consume flexibly in order to fit their pre-existing security workflows. We're showing this data in the Capsulate console. However, if I scroll further down to the bottom of the screen here, you can see that we actually provide the raw JSON output, which is created upon the generation of the alert itself. And that JSON can be sent to a number of different locations via a number of different mechanisms. Some of the desired destinations of choice are Splunk, Elk stack, and other log aggregation tools as well. Let's head back to the activity page here, where we see our high-level alerts. And we're going to jump back into the target one host, where we had access as a non-privileged user. Next, what I'm going to do from an attacker standpoint is I'm going to jump into the temp directory here. Typically, most attackers will try to hide the audit trail when temp directory is cleared in periodic timeframes inside of any production host. So it's a good way to make sure that their activity is not visible to monitoring solutions. If I take a look at the temp directory, I do have a file that I've already downloaded here. This is essentially an exploit that we're going to run against the system. So what I'm going to do is actually execute the payload. And you can see I'm actually running as root now here within the system. If I run who am I here, you can see I'm running as root. If I try to cat Etsy shadow, as an example, you can see that I have access to a number of different pieces of malicious information here. And let's try to Etsy password as well. I also have visibility to underlying passwords of users within the system. So as we went through the attack of dropping the kernel itself, there's a number of different things that Capsulate actually detected. And as I jump into the Capsulate console here, you can see the top level incident the initial suspicious interactive shell that we detected when we logged into the target one box is still our high-level alert. 
and the subsequent event of information below that alert are correlated with that top-level incident itself. So again, a number of different things that we actually detected related to this top-level incident. Including the privilege escalation, you can see that we detected a kernel exploit two different ways based on how the exploit is actually behaving related to the underlying kernel itself. Additionally, the kernel payload we dropped actually went through and disabled the default security mechanism that ships with most modern Linux kernels, known as SMAP SMAP. And essentially, that implements the law of least privilege between both the kernel land as well as user space. This particular exploit disabled that. So, as an attacker, I basically have access to run anything from user land and have all access to underlying resources associated with the kernel itself. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to replay the same attack using that pawner.shell script. And instead of running against target one, our web application server, we are going to actually try and run it against target two. In order to do that, I'm going to simply execute the pawner.shell and I'm going to try to execute against target two here. Typically, what we would be able to do, similar to what we did when we attacked target one, is use that reverse shell access, give an underlying bash prompt to the system and do reconnaissance like we did in the previous attack chain. What we're going to see in this scenario is that we've implemented the ability to take an automated response associated with the attack. This is possible through Capsulate Automated Response Capability. And as you can see here, I get kicked out of Target 2, and I end up landing back within my Metasploit box here. I was never actually able to obtain access to the underlying host itself, therefore preventing any subsequent malicious activity further down the attack kill chain. Jumping into the Capsulate console, if we take a look at the alert that was fired, you can see there was a subsequent automated response that was taken. We even call out the specific process ID associated with the activity. So, as we tried to use Metasploit to get a reverse shell back into Target 2, the actual shell is able to execute. However, Capsulate sees the malicious activity and, as you can see here, issues a kill response associated with process ID 900. Similar to this example, Capsulate will let you define custom policies. You can build custom allow and deny lists, or you could shut down any attempt to use SSH throughout all of your production infrastructure. With the ability to ship alerts via webhooks, Capsulate provides flexibility to create custom responses, or playbooks, in response to various incidents and attacks throughout your entire infrastructure, whether that's containerized, virtualized, or on-prem systems. Let's examine this suspicious interactive shell alert within the Capsulate console. Capsulate helps you to accelerate your incident response workflows by providing pre-built queries for investigating raw telemetry captured by the underlying Capsulate sensor. On the right-hand side, there's a number of different pre-built queries, including the execution of all shell commands. Looking at the process events related to this host, or looking at container events related to this node. As we jump into the shell commands query, we're actually taken over to a query builder. And you can see as we execute this particular query, we're looking at the specific sensor ID located within the target one host. And inside that target one host, there were a number of different commands that actually issued to the underlying bash prompt here. You can see all of those commands are actually captured within this program arguments column here. And as part of the investigation work though, security organizations can take this data understand the techniques, tactics, and procedures that an attacker used to get access to a system. Not only how they obtained access, but once they were inside the system, what were they doing? Were they looking at potentially sensitive files? Were they trying to exfiltrate data from a database? Were they trying to move laterally? What was the reconnaissance that the attacker was using or conducting as they had access to the underlying system itself? This telemetry data is also available external to the Capsulate console. Capsulate customers can run queries against their data using pre-existing data analysis tools, such as AWS Athena, GCP BigQuery, really any type of SQL builder or SQL syntax you can execute against the data will ship it off to the Capsulate sensor in Parquet format. If you'd like to learn more about how Capsulate can help protect your production Linux systems with monitoring, detection, and response, please request a demo today.